As you know, San Francisco has been struggling to recover since the pandemic, but some neighborhoods had problems even before that. Hate Ashbury among them. Homelessness, a drug crisis, business closures. They've combined and, and made the home of the summer of love anything but lovable. In an effort to improve the neighborhood, residents and the business community, with the help of the city, transform the hate into one of the most vibrant and safe communities. So the question now is, could that be a model for other Bay Area cities? Building a better Bay Area everywhere. ABC 7 News reporter Leanne yeah. Melendez is here to tell us, well, how do they do this? Yeah, well, it wasn't just one thing or two things. It was several things. But you have to understand that the Hate Street Corridor is known for having business owners who voice their concerns. Now, some of you may remember the sit-lie law where people were not allowed to sit or lie on the sidewalk or they would get fined. Well, many merchants there pushed for that. It really didn't work. And now, years later, merchants and residents have taken a different approach to revitalizing the area. Tourists have never stopped coming to the Haight-Ashbury. This famous corner represents the center of the hippie movement of the late 60s. And the summer of love changed the narrative of American culture. Thousands of young people from around the country were descending on the city's Haight-Ashbury district. We do not have an obligation to feed these people, to house them, or to care for them. The neighborhood saw a decline shortly after. Since then, the Haight has struggled, experiencing years of ups and downs. But between 2010 and 2015, the obvious street problems hampered any efforts to revitalize the area. In 2016, mistakes made by the city's street construction project hurt businesses. Construction crews have hit underground gas lines, resulting in five gas leaks since April on a single block of Haight Street. Kristen Evans is with the Haight-Ashbury Merchants Association. By the time that construction project was over, it was well over 20 vacant storefronts. So a lot of businesses gave up during that four-year construction period. And at the peak of the pandemic, the hate had 32 empty storefronts. Nearly a quarter of all businesses in the neighborhood closed. That's when merchants and residents of this neighborhood came together to ask for help. First came the retail vacancy tax to encourage property owners to lease empty spaces or face a $250 per linear foot tax that doubles every year. We've seen the rents come down and landlords be more motivated to fill the spaces. And so more than half of those vacancies are now filled. Street cleaning and power washing by Public Works followed. The streets here are practically gleaming. The Haight is also one of six San Francisco neighborhoods with community ambassadors providing an extra layer of security. I haven't seen a single tent here. Uh huh. Where are they? So there are still tents in the neighborhood. Um, they tend to not be on Haight Street itself. Proposition C, a business tax to fund services and housing for homeless people, has also benefited this neighborhood. Most businesses here are pleased with the results. It brings the tourists in for sure. Um, it gives a good word that they can come back to, to the city and to the Haight-Ashbury district. Um, they're more able to, to enjoy the city and all, all neighborhoods. So it's a lot cleaner, a lot safer. I think it also is as fewer people are spending time downtown, they're spending more time in the neighborhoods. But this neighborhood, which has been a safe haven for the youth who never stopped coming here since the late 60s, now finds itself losing them. The young people who put the hate on the map and kept the counterculture movement going aren't coming here anymore. We um, focus on working with youth and young adults 29 and under. One reason those people are missing? The hate is now what some call a service desert for young people. Nonprofits like Homeless Youth Alliance, Larkin Street Youth Services, which once provided direct services to youth in this neighborhood, have scaled back dramatically. A casualty of the high cost of office space. Even the Hate Ashbury Free Clinic closed in 2019. Many of the resources that our young people are asking for from us, we have to refer them to other parts of the city, and particularly in parts of the city that they have identified they don't feel safe in, and that can include downtown. And so while the hate may be cleaner and thriving, the neighborhood now struggles to find ways to support and keep the young dreamers that have long found solace in this neighborhood. 
And that commercial vacancy tax was introduced by Board President Aaron Peskin. And what has also helped to bring back businesses there is, number one, the process to open a business was streamlined. And number two, new small businesses got their fees waived during their first year. All of that was introduced by the current mayor, Mayor London Breed. But what's interesting is that the Haight-Ashbury and the Tenderloin are represented by the same supervisor. So mm -hmm. it tells me that, I mean, the, the community of involvement is very important. Yeah. Sure. And, and it's so nice to see because there's so much history and culture there, yes. right? To see that come and yeah, if get you lost. cut through the bureaucracy, you can get things done. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Thank you, Leanne. Yes, Leanne. Sure.